And uh, I'd only recently read about the last last thing I'll ask you about is um, Smokers. With um, is it was that the title with Sam Raimi that you worked on? Yeah. Or what's what's the status? Is it a done deal or is it not going to happen or is it? it it's uh, it's in the exact same place where uh, Round Table and Runaways and everything else is, which is whatever Phantom Zone where my Hollywood projects go off to live. <laughs> right. So uh, right. no uh, no plans right now, but we're still looking. It's uh, yeah, if we can find money for people who want to see spaceships on TV again, right. Uh, oh. We'll see, but, uh, but yeah, no plans for smokers right now. But it was terrific to just get to hang out with Sam Raimi and talk about what would the best sort of science fiction horror show of all time be. Right. And uh, so I'm sorry you missed out on it, but uh, as I say, never say never. Right. Cool. Very good. Very. Uh, what What are you watching on TV, or what movies have you seen lately that have really jumped out of you? Uh, yeah, I keep recommending Haywire. I don't know if anybody out there saw Haywire, Steven Soderbergh action movie. It had this sort of uh, a female MMA fighter. It got terrible reviews, and all of my friends hated it. I thought it was the best movie I've seen in the last couple of years. Just incredible <laughs> action sequences, great performances. I just I thought it was so cool. Uh, I love that movie. And uh, like everybody else, I'm a Mad Men addict, so just happy that's back. And uh, I'm obsessed with the Venture Brothers, and uh, so uh, I mostly just spend a lot of time rewatching the old Venture Brothers. So, uh, cool. All right, I'll pass it back over to James here. Hello. All right. Um, I kind of a. Uh, you kind of uh, answered uh, one of the questions, so I want to kind of uh, modify one a little bit. Um, not trying to, I know that there, there's no way you would say anything bad about any other creators or anything like that, but the idea of that they kind of toyed with of bringing Gertrude back, was that, is that something that you would be okay with or is it something you'd rather they not did? I know you don't really have any say so over it because you don't know the character technically, but is that something that you kind of cringed at or did you want her to kind of stay dead or? Uh, I'm always, okay whatever, whatever is a good story. Uh, like, I didn't have a good story to bring Gert back or anything that I liked as much as her death, so I wouldn't have done it. But if, uh, yeah, if other people find a way, yeah, I have no illusions about, uh, you know, I just, when I was a young creator working on the Kazar or Spider-Man or Swamp Thing, like, sometimes I'd have creators who were upset by things that I'd done, and uh, it was hard and sad. And sometimes I had guys like uh, Mark Miller who were just so supportive and just like, this is great. And it just, uh, it makes life joyous as a creator. So it's sort of, I want to get back to the creators who work on my characters. It's just the friends to know. I just want you to tell stories that are making me happy. There's no sort of platonic ideal for what a runway story has to be. Just be good and uh, be yourself. And I, I think everybody who's done runway so far has uh, done that. So uh, yeah, that's awesome. All right, I got another one. Because it's kind of uh, on everybody's mind, although I'm not the biggest Walking Dead fan, how, uh, how well do you think that Yorick and 355 would do in the Walking Dead universe? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, Yorick would do terribly. <laughs> he would be a zombie five minutes into things. Uh, 355 would last uh, somewhat longer, but uh, but not too long. And uh, Ampersand, I think, would be the, the sole sort of uh, survivor. <laughs> it would just be Ampersand killing off zombies. Uh, oh Please write that book. <laughs> Everybody in the store wants to read it. There might be a crossover in our future. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki. You mentioned two things I can talk on. Oh, no. Howdy how? <laughs> There's two things that you mentioned that I can speak about. Okay. One, Walking Dead. Lloyd, how do you feel about her? <laughs> <laughs> what, what about Lloyd? Lori, how do you feel about Lloyd from The Walking Dead? Oh, Lori from The Walking Dead. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I like her. She's a fascinating character. It's over from the TV show from Robert's comic, from both? From both. Oh. <laughs> they're, they're both uh, fascinating characters, I guess. I don't know what more to say than that. She's a whore. Fantastic <laughs> 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 <Interesting> interpretation. <laughs> She's a crying, confused, deceptive whore. Oh, damn, 
Absolutely, they have strongly held feelings about this character. Look inside you. No, I She's look inside yourself and see maybe where some of this anger is coming from. Thank you, you healed me. Anyway, the Venture Brothers. Which yeah. character is your favorite? Oh, uh... Yeah, I guess, uh, give me Dean. I'm uh, a Dean freak. And your favorite line from Dean? Ah, oh, this is hard. I, I, don't know, I don't know my favorite line from my own book. <laughs> okay, no then, what, what does he always dress up like? Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you you have a good Dean one ready to go. I, I can't do one off the top of my head. So I'll, Batman! I'll keep I'm so Batman! <laughs> That's a good one. All right, that's my favorite. <laughs> All right, then. Well, nice talking with you. You're <laughs> talking to you. Yeah, we love you. Hello again. Hello again. Um, so I was curious about Round Table hey, hey, hey. as well, and I was wondering um, how do you determine what you want to put in comic form as opposed to this where you did a screenplay? Yeah. Well, it's always, uh, you know, it's which is the right medium for the story. With Saga, I knew this was big, epic, fantasy, sci-fi, but it was going to be sort of a hard R, and uh, sometimes they'd just be sitting around talking or being naked or whatever, and I was like, boy, this is it's way too expensive to be a TV show, and it's uh, too kind of uh, weird and challenging to be a summer blockbuster, so it's like, this can kind of only be a comic, and Roundtable was like, oh, this features Michael Caine on a horse. And I was like, oh, that needs Michael Caine, so that can only be a movie. And Smokers was the same, where it was kind of, it was a documentary-style show set on a spaceship. So, uh, yeah, I love each medium, and so it's always, you know, I never want to use comics to be like, oh, I've got a great idea for an HBO show, I'll write it as a comic first. I just like comics to be comics and TV to be TV, but I'm still a whore, so if there's, you know, money... <laughs> I'll be happy to sell out, but... Yeah. Well, if you're not wearing pants, you could stand up and maybe get some tips over here. <laughs> no, 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 folks. Wow. 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 Okay. Okay. okay, uh, two questions, one of them is completely ridiculous. Why are you bald and do you wax your head? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's the reaction I was hoping for. Lex Luthor to, to both. <laughs> for the same reasons. And, uh, you know, if you think Lex Luthor waxes, that's, that's as much as I'll say. All right. Uh, do you regret anything from not putting in Y? Like, do you wish there was something you, you could have put in there that you didn't? I mean, every once in a while, there will be some fascinating factoid about, like, oh, there are only women in this remote Arctic station, or I'll be like, oh, that would have been six issues right there. But no, I, uh, you know, like I said, it was a journey of the last boy on Earth becoming the last man on Earth. So I only needed as many adventures along the way to help him sort of change that kind of character. So, no, um, why is done? That's it, you know? Unless, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I'll have to be super broke for there to be any single to watch last what I'll say. All right, all right. Uh, okay. Hello again. So, you mentioned about Saga Trace. So what I'm wondering is why is Brian Saga? <laughs> <laughs> and we have an echo. Why can we hear him now? Yeah, there's an echo going on. <laughs> so sorry, did you say why, why did I write Saga? No, no, no. <laughs> sorry. I'm wondering when you're writing Saga, is it going to be more towards single issue stories or is it always going to be an overlapping arc that's in trades? What are you leaning more towards? Yeah, I guess, you know, I sort of wanted to, with that first issue, I wanted to put on the cover, you know, it doesn't say saga number one, it's just like a chapter one. And I sort of want to do that, where it's, this is war and peace. This is going to be hundreds of chapters long. But I hope that each chapter is sort of like that first issue, a big meaty story, you know, with a beginning, middle, and an end. So, um, yeah, you know, I hope it'll be like Why the Last Man, that it'll read well in trades, but if you want to read it month to month, you get a totally different experience, I think. So, um, yeah, I don't care how you read it, as long as you pick it up, but I, I definitely always think just one issue at a time, just how can I make the most entertaining 22 pages possible. Not 22! <laughs> Thank you. I know. 
Thank you. Well, yeah, I know a lot of books are just 20 these days. And that's why I said, no way. No more 20 page books, 22 or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Hello again. Hello. How, are you comfortable there with no pants? Not at all. I can't tell you how uncomfortable I am. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I have three questions. Thank you for putting uh, up with me. One, uh, do you, did you consciously uh, lean towards female artists like for those specific stories? So there's a lot of talk about female creators now. Is this something that you wanted to do? Do you like to work with female creators more or is it just something that just happened to happen? No, I, I mean with Pia Guerra, that was, uh, I went into, uh, Heidi McDonald was my editor at Vertigo and just had laid out a bunch of samples and uh, I saw Pia's and I said, oh, uh, whoever this dude is, uh, get him. He's perfect for the book. So, no, it was never a consideration for why. And, uh, yeah, I guess to be honest, it was really hard to find artists for Saga. And I actually, uh, I, I'd sort of, long before I knew what story I wanted to tell, I'd started talking with some artists who happened to be male. And they, a lot of them talked into, like, I don't want to do things with boobies or severed heads. You know, and Fiona, my first What's conversation with, with her, she was like, oh no, I, I love all that stuff. <laughs> and I was like, yes, this is uh, good. So no, uh, I never care. It's just uh, if, um, if you're good or not. But I will say I looked at a lot of artists and I looked at enough artists who happened to be women enough to staff 12 books if I wanted to do that. If I only wanted to work with artists who happened to be female, I could do that for the rest of my career. So it's crazy that I think, for example, Fiona wasn't locked up in an exclusive at Marvel or DC. That's just, that's insane to me. But the, their loss is my gain. So I'm happy to be working with her. But, you know, I'm happy to be working with her because she's a great artist, not because she's a lady to artist. <laughs> you can't make comics about staples. All right, next question is, uh, do you listen to music when you write? And if so, what do you listen to? What inspires you as you write? Like, no, as you I don't. Write. I, yeah, I don't, I don't listen to music at all. I, I can't do that. That's, uh, I'd go insane. I just, uh, I, I, any distraction, if there's just a dust moat floating through the air, that would be an hour of lost writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like music, I just sit there and rock out. I wouldn't write. So no, I just have to sit and uh, I just have a room that I go to that doesn't have a Wi-Fi connection, that just has four blank walls, and just a desk with nothing on it, but a Sensory computer that's not connected to anything. And uh, I write. So, uh, yeah, writing is just really hard for me. I don't like it. It's a challenge. But, uh, so, I wish I could listen to music, but I can't. All right, last thing, and this is pretty important. If you could pick one Marvel character and one DC character to kill permanently forever, they would never ever come back, no matter what, who would they be? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it can't be Omac. <laughs> because he is yeah. fucking awesome. I really don't know. I'm trying to think of... Uh, or or any, any, any publisher, really. Like it, it could be anything. That had yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess, you know, i just pick characters of my own who I killed off and be like, yeah, I guess they can stay dead. But no, it was always like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to, I know, I'm sorry, I should just have a fun answer to uh, Spider-Man. Let's just say, those two are dead, and now, uh, oh no, Wolverine, no, I take back Spider-Man. Yeah. Wolverine, he's dead. There it is. All right. Thank you. So we have to make new things, so. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I'm gonna. I got like. Four. Actually, this has been bugging me for the longest time, though. Um, what came? How'd you come up with the line? Am I shooting? I think I'm shooting. Like, did you, your wife actually say that during childbirth, or is this something that just came along? Wow. I mean, you said you're just sitting down and asking a creator, did your wife? <laughs> and then no part of you thought like, maybe this is too personal. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like to be asked about do you wax your head or not, but uh, I was like, uh, I, I won't say whether or not I heard that line, but if, again, remember, I'm not very creative. I'm okay. Life. <laughs> so uh, I might have heard that somewhere, and I just knew in that moment two things. I knew that one, having a baby is exactly like coming up with an idea for a comic. Because when I thought about Why the Last Man, I was like, oh, it's a guy and a monkey and women with one boob, and I was like, either this is the best idea of all time or I just took a dump in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <he's dead. laughs> it's kind of like you're doing one thing, but you're actually making something good. So 
Uh, and so I knew that uh, that was one thing, and also I knew, oh, that's going to be the first page of my next comic. I knew that. So, uh, so yes. Okay. The second question, um, actually, what do you think of the YouTube videos we made? I just, was just throwing it out there. I thought that they were insanely brilliant. And <laughs> it's not insane, uh, but they were incredible, and I was so flattered. And uh, yeah, as uh, crazy as they were. I really think like the number of retailers around the country who are just like, oh yeah, maybe we should order a couple more of these. Like it's really the difference between us getting to do more saga or not do more saga. So uh, you saved our book. So that is how much I liked your commercials. <laughs> we, we wore a dress for you. Remember that? <laughs> that, uh, that counts for a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. Oh, hello. So e even after him asking if you know the, if if your wife says a shitting question, are we still your favorite readers or? <laughs> or it's okay if it's just not him. Just not top five. <laughs> One demerit. Um, I just wanted to say uh, I don't read a lot of you know X books or mutant books. But I loved your uh, your Mystique book, oh, and uh, to this day, one of my favorite characters. So this is uh, my my question here. Short pack. Was that all you? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That is it. Yeah. I just remember uh, reading about people who are obsessed with collecting action figures, and I was like, oh, short pack. I love it. The size of the GI Joe figure. And that's his only mutant power. Like he can't get bigger or smaller. <laughs> that, that was what made him the best. Was it just? And yeah, that's all you get. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love, thank you. I love that character. I did make him up, and I think everyone is like, wow, when we decided to kill off all the mutants in the Marvel Universe, Short Pack was one of the first to go after him. I haven't heard confirmation if he's alive or, or dead, but if Marvel were ever like, Brian, we would do a 12 issue uh, maxi series of Short Pack, I might be uh, called out of retirement. To do That's that. it. And uh, based on what you said before, I think. Um, at some point when you're doing your coasting stretch on uh, uh, on Saga, I think uh, uh, Beheadings and Boobies is a good title. And uh, Severed Heads and Boobies, I say go with that. And Sounds we'll make, good. We'll make more yeah. commercials. Yeah. You pick up if the collection is called, yeah, I'm Oh, hell yeah. Heads and Boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the quiet man? What? Who is the quiet man? Oh, who? Apparently Rick wants to know who who is the quiet man in Mystique. He's, who did you want the quiet? He's still man upset. Before the end. Of Rick the needs to know. Yeah, boy, the, I, this is kind of a Shatner moment, right? I don't remember. Oh God! I'll, uh, I'll tell Rick, I promise I'll go back in my notes and uh, check. It was some guy named Bob. You don't know. Him. Deal with it. It's the same guy as the skeleton in that Batman. All right, I only have four questions left. <laughs> it might only be three. It might only be three. I think one might be dumb. All right. That's We're here to some people confirm it. All right. I think it's a lot of credits, sir. Right? Okay. What's uh, what's the best superhero movie in your opinion? The best superhero movie. I guess pretty hard to top the first Superman movie for me, but uh, I'm also like a huge fan of the Michael Keaton, Tim Burton Batman. I just saw that at the right time in my life. So yeah, all right, there is a few clapping. So uh, yeah, I love Nolan's Dark Knight, it's great, but for me, my, Michael Keaton's always gonna kind of be my Bruce Wayne, so uh, yeah. Oh. You just got calm too. <laughs> you guys are punching nerds. My last runaways question. It, it's obviously my favorite thing that you did. Uh, Carolina's powers. Are they? Do they burn? Do they create pressure? What? What do you think that they do? Did you give it any thought at all? Because they don't look like they burn. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, Scott's Optic Blast in X-Men, I guess, right? He's converting solar energy into something that's kind of, uh, it's concussive, but she can focus it like a laser, so it can be hot if she wants it to. But yeah, it's just kind of a, a wave of force that comes out. And I, I, feel like I love talking about this. I can talk about superhero powers. <laughs> into the wee hours. Awesome. Then my last question is something that me and Rick have been arguing about for months on end. And I want you to be the final authority on it. We'll, we'll take your answer as what's, what's true. 
Good. Is Mr. Freeze... Is there anything on the line? Is there cash money or something? Uh, just, no. I just need to be right. He needs to be right. So, so in front of everybody, tell us once and for all. Is Mr. Freeze cool or not? <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is. Thank you. <laughs> For those Mike Mignola sort of designed Batman animated, he's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Freeze is very cool. Rick, you're insane if you don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Shut down. You broke right, Rick's heart. Leave it on. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now watch my my saga numbers are going to be cut in half. <laughs> Polarizing. Hi, Brian. Hello, nice to see you. Um, I'm a big Fable Sandman fan, um, and seeing more of a move towards um, like mythos and lore-based comics rather than superhero superpower comics. Um, and I feel like Saga compels me because of that. I feel like your story is along the same vein. I wonder if you could speak to what you think about, um, I guess, that genre and how you feel like your book fits. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sandman was definitely a huge influence, and uh, I love that book. And I love it particularly now, because it feels like the kind of comic that could only be a comic, you know? It's, there could be a TV show or a movie someday of Sandman, but it felt like so richly, uniquely a comic. Right. So, you know, I'll never be as good as Neil Gaiman, but I hope that Saga will feel similarly. You know, Neil said when he came up with Sandman that, it, you know, he wanted to do a book that it could be whatever he wanted it to be one month. It could be a horror book. It could be a fantasy book. It could be a period piece. Right. And Saga, I think, is the same. That's the appeal for fantasy for me is just Fiona and I, it's just our imagination was unleashed. So if we want to do just kind of a costume drama, we can land on the costume drama planet. And if we want to do our Western story, we can. So yeah, I just, uh, I love fantasy. And But you know, I didn't want to do something that was commenting on old myths. I really just wanted to do something that felt new. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you did the book. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Okay, just one question. <clears throat> Being that it's uh, coming out next week, Avengers or X Men? What side? I'm assuming you're gonna say X Men. Well, why are you assuming, young man? <laughs> <laughs> What's the <laughs> I, I, because bald guy, it's about Professor X. So. <laughs> <laughs> you do remind me of a young Professor X without hair. But, uh, yeah, well, I wish I could say that you were a bigot, but you're totally right. If only for being bald, then give you whichever side has the most baldies. So. <laughs> that's not too right, so that's doubling down. Are there any bald Avengers? Someone's out there who's got to know. Vision. 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 It's got kind of like a hat thing. That's fake. Luke Cage. Luke Cage. You got Nick Fury? No. 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 Smash me. Okay. Yeah, ultimate ultimate Fury, but no, boring white Fury? That guy's got hair. Yeah, I'm all about the X-Men. Okay. Little Jack. Yes. She did. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Okay, uh, Rick turned me on to uh, Why the Last Man. What I wanted to ask you was, where did you come up with the story and concept of that? And was it a long time ago? Did you come to you There's one probably, day? Uh, I mean, you know, writers never know where ideas come from, but I did go to an all-boys Catholic high school in Cleveland, and uh, we had a sister school that would sometimes put on plays. But they would need actors to come and I was like, this is fantastic. It's this opportunity to be a mole inside our the sister school and get to hang out with girls. So, uh, I, but I think the experience of walking through the halls and just sort of seeing the like mixture of disgust and fear and like what is a guy doing in our world? I'm sure Yorick was sort of born in that moment. And just as I got older, wanting to sort of take this male fantasy of being the last man on earth and turn it on its head and hopefully say something dramatic about uh, gender relations um, and monkey poop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I need to redeem myself. 
Hey. Hey again. All right. Uh, I've got kind of a basic question. You mentioned earlier about sitting alone in a room with nothing in it, and it sounds like it's a really boring, dry thing to do. I wonder how long do you spend working on writing a comic? Like, do you? Like, what's your writing schedule like? Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, especially now that I have kids, it's a little more uh, locked down than it used to be. Like, I used to love writing from midnight till 8 a.m. and then sleeping until 4 p.m. And then I'd talk on the phone with editors for like an hour or so. And then, you know, it would be like the end of the workday. My wife would come home and we'd just hang out till midnight. And then I'd start writing again. That's the best. And I miss those days. But I can't do that anymore because I'm Johnny Munchmail. So now I just, I write from nine to six every day. And comics take me about a week to write, you know, about six days on average. So uh, yeah, you know, right now I have time to write one monthly and then the other three weeks go to my boring day job writing movies or whatever. So uh, yeah, it's just really, you know, every day forcing yourself to write and, you know, just training yourself to not have writer's block. And I think that's a thing. If you can force yourself to write at least an hour a day, every day, seven days a week, whether it's Christmas or your grandfather's funeral, right. you have to write 45 minutes a day, no matter what, you just trick your body into knowing like, oh, I've got to write today. Right. Okay. Cool. That, that's, that's very good that you said that because uh, that was actually another question that I had, like tips for aspiring writers. But we've got a lot of people who want to ask questions, so thanks a lot. Of course. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. Hi, again. Um, okay, in, in the beginning of why you have a supermodel with big boobs picking up trash, and I wanted to know how you totally like nailed it when she's just like a lot of good these did me because there's no more males. Like how? Tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm, it's hilarious. It's one of my favorite scenes in any comic ever. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it was just so interesting that when I came up with the idea, I would uh, talk about it with my friends, many of whom happened to be women, and it would just be so interesting to hear that they would all be like, here's the way the world would be. And it would be completely different from one woman to the next. And I would ask like, would you still wear makeup? And some women would just be like, yeah, do you think I'm wearing that for you, asshole? Like, no, like, it's for me and for other ladies. Like, I don't care about you. Or some women would be like, oh yeah, absolutely. Once you guys are dead, I would never do this. So yeah, I think that was just born out of some conversations I had with real women. And so hopefully that's why it feels genuine. No, no, it totally does. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah, that's that's really all I wanted to know. Do you think, like, all right, I know that now every time I see a lady with big boobs, I'm just thinking, like, it, would she say that excuse, I did this for myself? Or, or what, what do you think, like, seriously, what do you think when you see ladies with with fake boobs. What do you think? <laughs> 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 questions I like getting increasingly personal. Well, I just don't know how to look at uh, when we're fake boobs. Uh, no, I really, if women have fake boobs, I, I don't know, and I probably would not uh, ask them. It's been a few years <laughs> since I was able to delve into this topic as much as I would like to, perhaps. But, uh, I feel emboldened by you saying this now, so I, I'll, next time I see a pair that I think would be sure. Yeah, next time you see a pair of fake boobs, just think of me. That's nice. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Uh, actually, thank you for Saga. It's actually the first thing of yours I've read, and oh, I'm going to have cool. to read thank everything you. you've written now. Nice. Thank you. Oh, wow. Um, that means a lot. Thank you. But I, I did have a question. Um, if you could not simply walk into Mordor, how would you choose to get there? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Is it is a jetpack an option? Is that, uh, it's you said you have an imagination, so I'm gonna assume. Okay, so yes, yeah, well, a jetpack. Then I'm jetpacking in. Jet I'm jet All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, um, there's nothing deeply personal I'm about to ask you. Um, I actually want to thank you for answering all like the writing questions I had because I had like three different pages in my notes based on writing. But I really thank you for that. Um, actually, one thing, because 
ex machina to me is like one of your best works. Um, how how did you come? How did you write that book without being so? Oh, I am so left wing. I am so right wing. How did you find that balance in that book? And I thought that was like the best thing ever because I hate when people get preachy about politics. Yeah, it was always funny to read people would be like, uh, ex machina because it's just Vaughn's mouthpiece for his politics. And I'd be like, but wait, I hated what Mitchell Hundred was saying, that issue. I don't, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I never wanted it to just be a book about my own boring politics. I would just write an op-ed piece or whatever. It would just be what will make for the coolest story, you know. And so a lot of times that would be the coolest story would be Mayor Hundred is going to feel the complete opposite of the way I do about something. But he's the hero of the book. So, yeah, I guess just always first allegiance is to story. Whatever makes for a cool story, that's all that matters. Okay. I'll thank you for, for all your time, man. You keep writing, just, no, just keep doing what you keep doing, which I don't know what it is, but it's something. <laughs> it's a lot of it's sacrificing virgins and girls with fake boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing this down, by the way. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good. Again. Got this Picard vibe going on here. <laughs> but I um, actually wanted to... Saga's is the first thing you have read, seriously? And I'm loving it. What was I going to pick? I wanted to pick at you about the one thing, even though I did like it. You know, in the castle, the guy's yep. looking at his. He's looking at his communicator. He's going, man. I'm not. You know, I'm not getting pick up here. I'm thinking, you know, a little too hip. But you know, I'm kind of seeing where you're going with that. But. Uh, it's interesting. I, I, you know, I knew there would be complaints about naked robots, but I mean, the, the second biggest complaint is, wait, a guy is auto updating his apps? Like, no, I don't like this. I'm taken out of the story. I didn't say which I didn't is like fascinating. It. And like, I've also heard that some people are like, no. As soon as I saw cigarettes, no. And I think it's interesting that, like in Star Wars, like we can alcohol, that's kind of okay, but now cigarettes and that's too much in our world. I like that Saga is definitely, I, I wanted to let you know this first issue, this is not like other universes you've seen. And in some ways, it will be completely unlike ours. And in other ways, it will be kind of uncomfortably exactly like our world. But it's very deliberate, and I know some people are going to hate that and feel it takes you out of the story. But I will say, when that happens, it might be because I want you to be taken out of the story for a second. Interesting. And I got to say this: weirdly enough, although the robot sex thing was weird, you kind of had that weird little '70s vibe with the television hands. I actually <laughs> liked that. <laughs> it's very 1970s. They kind of well, I was born. I was born in the '70s, and that's when I grew up loving TVs. Yeah. I, you know, and this we're living in a golden age of television, where TVs never been better, but TVs never look more boring. They're just flat rectangles now. So, I like old TVs. They're sexy. So, it's just my weird <laughs> fetish now to give them. Okay. TVs, I guess so I've got a lot of problems. Clearly, fetish. How much does that explain? I guess. All right. But thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.